you join me on a very snowy morning here in mid Wales which seems to me an ideal opportunity to test out the Nankang winter tyres I have on my Perodua Nipper. Now I've got winter tyres on the XM, uh, they're Continentals and I've already proved that they're a really good tyre. Uh, I've not really had a chance to try these Nankangs yet and to be honest if you're driving in snow the Nipper is a pretty ideal car because nothing's power assisted apart from the brakes very slightly and you can really feel what's going on on the road in theory. It has to be said, things have turned a bit slushy since I first came in this morning. That won't be quite so scary after all. So there are no traction issues so far. Lots of cars about. One thing I will say about driving in snow. For God's sake, clear the snow off the car before you drive away. Um, I, I use a soft broom, um, which is absolutely ideal. So this road's not too bad, because it's seen quite a lot of traffic and it's also gritted. Um, but we're about to head onto a road which is not treated, we just to see what a difference there is. The car behind is ignoring the fact that the traction is a, a bit of a premium at the moment, and is far too close to my backside. Increase your... Um, distances between cars because you will not be able to stop as quickly as you expect. Another top tip, if you know snow is forecast, lift the wiper arms up on the car because that makes it easier to clear the snow off, it stops them freezing. No wheel spin so far. The real key to driving in these conditions is don't be a dick. If you try to drive at normal speeds, you're going to have quite a bad accident. And that's regardless of what tyres you've got fitted and whether you're in a 4x4. Four four. four wheel drive gives you better traction so you can get underway all the better. 4x4s four are big and heavy. Four-wheel drive gives you no advantage when it comes to slowing down. Yeah, I'm starting to feel the lack of grip. You can feel it as the steering go, tends to go lighter. Winter tyres do prove that unless things get really bad, you don't really need a 4x4. When I moved to the countryside, everyone was like, oh, you'll have to get a 4x4. And because I'm stupid, I did. I got a Land Rover 90 V8, which did 15 to the gallon. It broke down a lot and um, drank an awful lot of fuel. Not the biggest success I've ever had. If I really put my foot down now, it is just starting to break traction, but I still feel perfectly in control, which is good because there's a bloody huge drop that side of the road. And no crash barrier. Exciting. It's definitely getting quite snowy now. Oh yeah, I can feel it twitching around a bit now. There's a bit of wheel spin. Sadly, I haven't got the summer tyres for this car anymore, which is a shame. It would be interesting to do a back-to-back -back comparison. So, now we've reached the summit, and we're now coming down the other side, and this is where things can get very scary indeed. I haven't got anti-lock brakes in this car, which I actually prefer, because actually locking a wheel isn't necessarily a bad thing in snow because you build up a wedge of snow in front of the tyre. Right, I'm now going to try and stop as hard as I dare. Look at that, I mean, that is quite impressive. It's the biggest reason for fitting winter tyres. They're not snow tyres, but they improve the braking performance whenever conditions are like this, when it's cold even if there's no snow about. I'm therefore declaring the Perodua Nipper on Nankang winter tyres a success. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to visit my new website www.hubna.org and I'll see you next time. Ta-da!